I would happily clap those cheeks and then uh, sign my name on her back like I'm John Hancock. But let's move on. I got some uh, I got some virus news to uh, to to get into here. Not that one. Not that one. The other one, HIV. The uh, that's the one you really don't want to get. But uh, yeah, take that. Uh, what is it? Is it Truvardi? Truvardi for prep. Love those commercials. I love a prep commercial. There's nothing better than like two guys lifting weights and then slicing fruit and gazing longingly into each other's eyes while uh, while their parents stand there and and feel bad about what they uh, what their offspring turned into. But uh, yeah, HIV. That you don't. Especially in the time of coronavirus, you really don't want to get it. So a reminder to all of you out there hitting the uh, the truck stop party circuit to uh, to take your prep because you don't you don't want to get coronavirus with an already weakened immune system. That is just a death sentence. What's the uh, what's the New York Post say about AIDS though? Here's what they say: AIDS likely made the leap from chimpanzees to humans because of a starving World War I soldier who was forced to hunt animals for food, according to a new book. First of all, I want to say, as a veteran, fighting in World War I and World War II sounds like it fucking sucked. Uh, Iraq was a shithole, but at least in Iraq, um, if you make it back inside from outside the wire without getting, you know, blown into 15 different pieces at least after that they have like an omelet bar in the air-conditioned chow hall and the dallas cowboys cheerleaders come through on a uso tour so you're like yeah this is there was no point during my time in the desert when i thought to myself like fuck uh, you know i'm a day away from having to hunt aids monkeys to survive that we never got to that point and and thank god thank god thank god i just got to go out on patrol come in eat an omelet, lift weights, jack off, go to sleep, repeat for, for six months. Much better than uh, than hunting and eating AIDS monkeys. Uh, the unknown patient zero was part of an invasion force of 1,600 Belgian and French troops who, along with 4,000 African AIDS, had traveled from Leopoldville in the Belgian Congo to a remote outpost in Cameroon, says Canadian microbiologist Jacques Pepin who once worked as a bush doctor in cent- in Central Africa in the 1980s. It must have been incredibly confusing when you introduced yourself as a bush doctor in the 1980s. Because Brazilian waxes wouldn't be en vogue for another decade or so. Like if you're even if you're talking about late 80s, the Brazilian was not a widespread phenomenon until probably the mid late 90s. So pro- I have to imagine there was a lot of for uh, Jacques Papin here. I have to imagine he ran into a lot of, uh, hey, what do you do for a living, Jacques? Oh, oh, I'm an African bush doctor. Didn't know gynecologists specialized in different continents. There is, uh, there's definitely a joke in there about Asian broads having sideways snatches, but uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not clever enough to uh, to write it. So, uh, Mushu, pork me one over. Comment with one if you got a good sideways vagina joke, throw it out there. But Patient Zero was likely injured after killing a subspecies of chimp, Pan troglodytes troglodytes, infected with a simian virus that was a precursor to HIV or human immunodeficiency virus, the virus which causes AIDS. Uh, Pepin writes that in the tome recently published by Cambridge University Press. In a 2011 edition of the seminal book, Pepin originally posited HIV leapt from chimps to humans after an injured African hunter killed one of the beasts in 1921, becoming infected in the process. Pepin then chronicles how the virus spread was fueled throughout the world by colonization, prostitution, and well-meaning public health campaigns, which lacked what are now common safety protocols, such as barring the sharing of needles. Yikes. Yeah, that's a big one. You don't want to you don't want to share needles when there's HIV about. Um, in the second edition released this month, Pepin draws on research in medical archives in Africa and Europe, suggesting patient zero was not a native hunter, but instead a starving World War I soldier forced to hunt chimps for food when his regiment got stuck in the remote forest around 
Molondu, Cameroon, and ran out of food supplies. So says the Bush doctor, but I still have my suspicions. The, uh, the old story, of course, was that AIDS was spread by a gay flight attendant. And that makes more sense to me, right? Uh, you got the guy, he's zipping all over the planet. He's getting different kinds of, of international dick wherever he goes. Uh, meanwhile, he's carrying this bug that he got uh, after getting spit roasted by the Hutu and the Tutsi. Um, and we all know, we all know from science that uh, you should have learned this in sex ed, that a, a great big dick can really tear an anus apart. Um, and when you start getting micro tears in, in the shaft uh, um, of the penis, which happens because it's very thin skin, and, and in the butthole, you create conditions that are ripe for the, uh, the spread of disease. Like the same way a swamp uh, is prone to spreading malaria, a big dick going into a tight asshole without a condom is a recipe for the spread of disease. And of course, out there on the savannah, they pack some, some fucking hogs. And I mean, look, you, we've all seen National Geographic. Um, the chicks all have those incredibly saggy titties. And I have to assume that that's an evolutionary thing because it probably hurts like a motherfucker to take uh, a, a local dick out there inside of you. But there's a but there's palm trees all over so you get you squeeze out some palm oil onto a floppy tit and onto the shaft of one of these massive cocks you lube everything up you wrap the titty around it and you just start tugging away that's good fun for everybody i think because you can still the woman stimulate she's stimulating her nipples and everything i remember this one uh, one chick i used to hook up with her uh, her finishing move was to uh, take my penis out of her it would be coated with, you know, vagina juice, and then she'd she'd suck on it a little bit, and you know, really lube it up, and then work it, you know, to basically jerk it off with her tit. It wasn't even tit fucking; it was like a tit jerk. It was a fantastic, one of the great all time finishing moves. So I'm saying is um, a much better option than a, you know, a, you know, a violent, painful, bloody penetration is a well lubed tit job, and. So what I think happened here is you get these French and Belgian guys and they're stranded out in the jungle and there's no pussy around for miles. And if you know anything about Europeans, it's that Europeans need to fuck. Okay. The other day they broke up a 100 person orgy in a French warehouse and we're at the height of a pandemic. There was a couple months ago, there was that story about the, uh, the anti-gay politician from like Brussels or whatever. He got caught at a big gay gangbang. Um, th this is just the way it is. This is the way the Europeans work. The height of a pandemic and they can't stay home and whack off. All right. You show me a Frenchman with an erection and I will show you a guy who is not the least bit concerned about spreading a virus. So... You got these euros on the fucking war path and war it does. It makes you feel virile and manly and aggressive. And I remember when I got back from Iraq, I was ready to fuck anything that moved. I went on a fuck spree uh, when I got back from, uh, from Iraq. So these euros are on the war path and they come across some lady monkeys and they're like, oh, ho, ho, I have not gotten the pussy since we left gay Paris. And the next thing you know, the entire battalion is going full out Pepe Le Pew. And remember, uh, the, the French, fucking weirdos, fucking creeps, but they are known as great lovers. So they're not just going to bang the chimps, right? They're going down on them. They're eating chimp pussy. They're tossing chimp salad. I mean, they are getting absolutely basted in pure chimpanzee essence during this wild jungle orgy. Um, and I'm sure, I'm sure the African soldiers who were with them were like, you know, what the fuck, what are these Euro freaks doing? Right. And then a few of the guys, they survive, they make it out of the jungle. So they do again, what the French do. They get back to, 
to base wherever they're at their base in, in the Congo. And uh, like I said, you get home from war, you want to fuck. So they throw just a great big gangbang and they're freaks. They are absolute, absolute freaks. The, the French are freaks. They will put anything in any hole. They are an anything goes type of people when it comes to sex. Live and let live. So you got to figure some of the Frenchmen who were going down on some of these lady chimps and fucking these lady chimps, some of them were at this big victory gangbang in the Congo and are like, yeah, fuck it, man. We just survived World War I. You know, you, they let their assholes get torn up by some of the aforementioned huge local dick. And the next thing you know, HIV is spreading through the local population like fucking wildfire. Um, but of course, it's World War I, which is we're fighting in World War I is pretty much a death sentence. So these guys, after the gangbang's over, these Frenchmen got to go back out on the war path. Uh, so eventually most of them, most guys who went to World War I, I feel like didn't come back. They get killed by mustard gas before they make it back to Europe. So the HIV, this big orgy with the chimps is what brings HIV from chimps to humans. But for like 60 years, it's just a localized problem in the Congo because nobody survived to bring it back out to uh, to Europe or whatever. And then all of a sudden, we make these advances in uh, in air travel and globalization kicks into high gear. And uh, a fun-loving flight attendant has a, a layover in Zimbabwe and decides to sample a bit of the local python. And uh, boom, next thing you know, we're, uh, we're mourning the loss of, of Freddie Mercury. Um, so yeah, that anyway, that's my theory about how AIDS spread. That's what I extrapolated from reading that. I think the doctor got part of the way there when he said stranded World War I soldiers, but I think he, he missed something when he says, yeah, it's the French. Well, how did it really make the leap? I think he was wrong about the hunting is what I'm saying.